in my words and what I have done, what I have faith. for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had built. Then the Lord said, If now, while they are one people, all speaking the same language, they have started to do this. Nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us then go down there and confuse their language so that one will not understand what another says. Thus the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of all the world. It was from that place that he scattered them all over the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees us is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Anyone who thirsts, come to me and drink. As scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. 
He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. I would like first to acknowledge all of you who are attending the Mass with us right now at your own home uh, for this Sunday. This Sunday we celebrate the Solemnity of Pentecost. It is the feast that concludes the entire season of Easter after 50 days. On the solemn feast, the portrait of God become complete. The gospel teaches us that there are three divine persons in one God. The first person is God the Father because he is the origin and destiny of all. The second person is the Son, our brother Jesus, in whom we have become sons and daughters of the Father. And we meet the third person this Sunday the Holy Spirit. And how does Jesus present him? Jesus says he is the paraclete. He is the consoler. He is the spirit of truth. After Jesus' resurrection, he told the disciples to wait for the great gift, which is divine. Now this gift has finally arrived and we celebrate this gift of Jesus and of the Father, the gift of the Holy Spirit, who after Jesus' ascension will accompany the disciples in their day-to-day -day earthly life. More than that, the Spirit actually dwells within our hearts, assuaging our fears and filling us with confidence that we are loved. In other words, the Holy Spirit is all that we need in a friend. A paraclete is a defender in times of difficulty. A consoler is one who assures us that everything will be all right. A true friend always brings us to the truth, either to inspire us or to challenge us. And when the truth comes from the lips of a friend, even if it hurts, we are inclined to follow the truth. Yes, like a friend, this is what the Holy Spirit does for us. He is not always seen around us like family members or office worker or classmates, but a friend is always there for you and for me. As a friend, the Holy Spirit is a reliable in a very moment, in every circumstance, even if he is not physically around. This final gift of the Father and the Son to the church and to each of us will guide and lead us as a friend to help us survive every crisis. Could be health, financial, can be a family or social concerns and worries. In our present situation, of fear, of doubt, of anxiety and anger brought about by this pandemic. There are too many restlessness and up upheavals within our hearts. And where do you go 
Where do you turn to in order to drown our pain and sorrows? Is it television or technology or vices or liquor or gambling? Yes, while these can give relief, but the respite is temporary and the same anxiety and uncertainty will resurface to plague us again and again. This is the reason why it is important to remember this Sunday what Jesus says to the disciples on this solemnity of the Pentecost Sunday. Jesus says, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Here we see that the gift of peace and the gift of the Spirit are cemented together. They cannot be separated. We ask, what does this gift of peace which the Holy Spirit can give us? What does, this, what does it mean in our daily life? Let me share to you a story that hopefully in the story we can see what is this gift of peace that the Holy Spirit is giving us this Sunday. There was once a story shared by a priest. There was a king who offered a prize to the artist who would paint the best picture of peace. And many artists presented their paintings to the king. And the king looked at all the pictures, but only two of them that captured his attention. One picture was of a calm lake, and the lake was a perfect mirror for peaceful towering mountains, which were all around it. Overhead was a blue sky with fluffy white clouds. All who saw this picture thought that it was a perfect picture of peace. The other picture had mountains too, but these were rugged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell and in which all lightning played. Down the side of the mountain tumbled a foaming waterfall. This did not look peaceful at all. But when the king looked closely, he saw behind the waterfall a tiny green bush growing in a crack in the rock. In the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. There, in the midst of the rush of angry water, sat the mother bird on her nest. Which picture do you think won the prize? The king chose the second picture. And when asked, the king explained, Peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise. Peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no trouble. Peace does not mean to be in a place where there's no tribulation and affliction, nor war. Rather, peace means to be in the midst of all those things and still be calm in your heart. That is the real meaning of peace. And this is important to ponder and reflect, especially in this very difficult moment in our time. We know that fear can imprison us. And since all fear is bondage, many times we are not even aware how we become prisoners of our own fears. And this is what the Holy Spirit will help us as our friend, so that we may break away from this bondage where we may be hiding because of fear. If you are struggling to find meaning and direction in life, if you and your family are experiencing brokenness due to a crisis at home or death of a family member, 
if you are tormented by suffering because you feel weak, if you are gripped by sadness with your career, profession, or business, if you are living in poverty and don't have enough in life now, receive the peace of the Holy Spirit. Receive the gift of the Lord. And this is the Holy Spirit who brings us into friendship with God, who brings us into following the Lord through the power and worship and service of others. This is the Spirit who silently works in the hearts of ours to transform us, to heal us, and to rejuvenate us. In God, we have not only a father and a son, we also have a friend, and that we celebrate this Sunday, of having a divine gift of a friend. The challenge is given to us this Sunday. Be open to this divine person. Be open to this gift, and trust him with everything that happens in your life, because he is the paraclete. He is the consoler. He is the Spirit of Truth. We all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Since God endows us with the gift of his own life by the imparting the Holy Spirit, let us come to him with, with prayers inspired by the Holy Spirit. Let us come to him alive and free in the divine presence. That the Holy Spirit will continue to enrich the church with the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, fortitude, piety, counsel, and fear of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Holy Spirit give us the same courage of the apostles at Pentecost so that we may share our faith with the world around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing to be received into the church, May the Holy Spirit prepare them to receive this new life with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions and for the published intentions for the living this week, including Philip Schwartz, Roger McLean, Aaron Ward, 
Salem Brothers Carpet Cleaning, William Pringle, Norma Gilstrap, Julie Redden, for reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and for St. Joseph Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Richard Neeson, John and Marie Ichabal, Mary Nguyen, Rosovina Quiroz, John Mingus, Carolyn Wetzer, and for the deceased members of the Dyer family, may their souls and all the souls of all the faithful departed rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Also for our parish and every intention of our members, especially for Tui Tran and family, for Grace and Tim Tran, Norma and Alexis Rodriguez, for Kathleen and Roger Adamson, Jack McGurry, Mel Baganaban, and Mirna de la Cruz, for the intention of Victoria Servania, Tony and Amor Marion, and also for the sick, Clara Lingsey and Tim Tran, and also for the soul of the dead, Nuk Tran, Arnel Servania, and Paolo Sperman. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father all-powerful, receive these prayers from a people made one by the Holy Spirit, who always dwells within us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Pour out upon this gifts the blessing of your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Venis Utrechtin Terra, Gloria Tua, Osana in excelsis, benedictus, benedict in nomine domini, Osana in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all you, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy the gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you said thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward for his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Last 
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit, whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles, through Christ our Lord. Before I give the final blessing again, thank you for joining us at your own home to celebrate uh, the solemnity this Sunday. And also for those who continue to volunteer and uh, help our church in whatever means, uh, thank you so much. And for your stewardship commitment Sunday every weekend, 
uh, thank you uh, that continue to help us uh, with the needs of our uh, community and our parish. Just give the parish a call if you have any needs and you can leave a voice uh, a message on our voicemails. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Blessed Pentecost Sunday. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan in all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.